and welcome to this my fourth video in this series about creating a map using QGIS. In this video I'll be talking about styling or symbolizing a data in QGIS. So the topics I'll be covering is our copying and pasting styles between layers. I'll be talking about saving styles. I'll be talking a wee bit about the basic components of a symbol. I will mention colors and how we use colors when we talk about cryptography. I will be talking about, let's say, the three standard ways of styling in GIS, single symbol and categorical and gradiated styles. So let's dive in and see how this is done in QGIS. So in a previous video, I um, downloaded the layers. I have subsetted my raster layer here. I also have some vector layers. I have some towns and some um, countries. Um, this shown as borders. So this is my uh, data set here. I've got there. Um, so this is what I have to work with. But first of all, I'll look at this my raster data set here, which is a boring gray color compared to the one the co the color of the ones before I subsetted it. So the easiest trick when you have one layer that has the correct styling and that one that doesn't is that you can simply right click on the layer that has the correct one, go to the style sub menu and say copy style, go to the layer that you want to assign it to gray one right click on it go to style and say paste style and now i have the correct styling in my sub map so i can now get rid of the one that covered the whole world get rid of that layer i think let's get rid of that layer um so so now hopefully i've only got my subset of data and at this point I could go to my folder we talked about this earlier where I had this downloaded data and I'm not using any of this anymore I have now got all my data that I'm using in this subset of versions so I can no problem simply get rid of this and um, I'm now Got rid of all that preliminary data that I started with and that I don't need any longer. The next point I'll be talking about is styling and the basic elements of a styling. I will um, use my polygon layer here, so my countries here, to demonstrate these components of a style. So if I have this layer here, I have two possibilities really. Um, I can click this style icon here, here which stylizes the layer, um, or I can right click and go and say property style. They look very identical, but um, you might get a wee bit confused because they're almost identical but not quite. If you go this tool up here and use that you can see your results as you work so there's a live update of any changes this one down here so if i change the color of my data something i can see it immediately however i can't save my styles in this version which is sometimes annoying so um oh, yeah it's a bit different not not quite the same so let's look um so if i go in here and look at this layer here and say okay i want to use this country just to show the borders so this is one of the simple ones so this is a single symbol so all the countries has the same and it is also a simple fill. 
has lots of different advanced simplification methods, so SVGs, Hatch, whatever. But really, let's stick with simple select, simple fill here. So a symbol or a symbology consists of a fill color, red, whatever color, red. Um, go back. It has a fill style, which is solid, diagonal hatched or whatever, or none. So if I have none, it has no fill in it. And then it has get rid of these probably we can see it easier. Um my style color is or my stroke color is the edge. So I can have it black, white, whatever. It has a width. And it has a stroke type. So these are all the things I can modify in my simple version here. Again here, it can become really, really advanced. There's another video about going into details on this in the description because we can add with the did plus add new layers on top of each other and get really really complex. So let's use it as it is. So I'm happy with these. Um and, but as I said, the problem was that I can't save it. I can apply it, but it's not saved with my file. And at this point, it might be a good idea to just talk about saving. So, if I decide I want um, my project just to contain these three countries, let save with the cities in it, like that. As my project, if I go up and say save in the project, press the little save icon here. First time you need to give it a name, so I'll save it in my project folder. Um, mm, mm, there, let's call it QGIS Map Auto. What I have now saved is information about. Which of these layers are turned on and how are they styled? That means if I close QGIS, I can um, do two things. I can go to my folder and double click this file. This will bring me back into QGIS with my uh, styling on it. Like that, or if I had started QGIS, to start a new version of QGIS, I can, um, when QGIS starts, I can then from this series of previous projects open a project. So here I have this one, I just click on it, or I could go up from file um, and say open to open a project. So it, the important thing is to note that projects are not data. Projects are small files that are stored in the folder. So as you can see this one, very, very small, 26 kilobytes. So really no data there. The data is in the geodatabase and in my TIFF file. And um, they live their life. And then we have my project that says, Okay, load this data and this data and style it in a specific way. If you want to um, use a data set in many projects and you want the styling to follow the data set, then you'll have to save the styling outside the project. So in this case, I can go to my countries and instead of using this style one, I will now you can do a, do a right click and properties and now go to symbology. So it, let's call it styling there. It's called symbology. A bit confusing, same thing. But the interesting thing is 
if I go this way, I have this one that is called style, and I can say save as default. I was just say to save style. If I um, to save as default, what happens? Save default style, and then it will say for data set or local database. So this is a uh, data um, data set raw source database. Okay, data set. And now it's saved in that data file. So I open that, send that to database to someone, and they open it. They will get the same styling as I have. If I do the same with a raster layer, so my this one, a bit different. Again, there I have to go to the properties and topology. On here, I can now say. Save as default. And what has happened now is that there is a new file. So now I have a file that is named exactly the same as a TIFF file, but with the exact extension here. So when you open this TIFF file, QGIS will look for a style file named the same and will open it. So now we have also our styling set here. We are um, now ready to uh, look at styling our points. Let's get rid of all my backgrounds so it's easy to see. So uh, I now have my points here. If I go and just use this shop I want to make sure it's selected. One. I can set in here we have a simple marker and it has a color. One thing to talk about with colors is that when we're making maps, we normally talk about colors in terms of hue, saturation, and value, and not in R, G, and B. There's also a transparency or alpha. So the hue is if you wish a color. Um, this can probably easiest be understood by choosing this setting here, which is specifically for hue value settings. So if this is my color wheel, this white line is my hue. So if I move this around, you can see that this is zero degrees, then it goes. 90 degrees, 180, 70, and back. So I can see if I want these to be a bluish color, I can set them around here. Then I have my saturation, so that how saturated my color is. So that is this axis in my little triangle in here. So if I move my point right down. So this corner here, you can see we have a 100% saturation. So it's the color is completely saturated with blue. If I move it up, I have a 0% saturation. And whatever color I choose in my view, the result will be white. 0% saturation will always render a white color. Whatever my view is. I want to see the color, I need to move my saturation. The other one is my value. So value goes again from 100% to zero. Zero value is really how much light is present. So zero that is completely dark. So when something is out there at my zero, Right out there, my um, there's no light in whatever my hue. The resulting color is black because no light generates a black color. So give it some value. Give it some more saturation. Now we can have our blue color. In general, because this is much more 
logic than mixing red, green and blue together. This is the type of color specification we use when we work with maps. So just a little about a by. And you can decide which graphic interface you want. You can also use an eyedropper to pick up colors from your interface. Um, so our symbols here can have different um, ways of controlling what's there. We have two different types of uh, data that we would like to, namely categorical data and gradiated data here. So they are up here where it says at the moment single symbol. If I choose this, I get a drop down. See, there's lots of different variants. But let's look at categorical. So categorical is, as it says, a category. In our case, some of these populated places are capitals. So I want them to display differently. If I choose categorical, I then have to choose which attribute is controlling my categories or containing my categories. In this case, I want it to be this one that says whether or not it is the capital of a, the administrative unit that is part of. So that's the one. And I'd be using circles as a default. Now, if I now say classify, it will give me zeros and ones. Zero typically means false, and one means true. So this is so this is a symbol for capitals. And just like before, when I used a sing, single symbol, I can now double click the symbol here, and it will bring me the same dialog box. And I can say, okay, if it is a capital, I want it to be depicted in a big red star. And if it's a non-capital, I can have it depicted as a circle. And maybe they were too large. So I can reduce the size to a two. 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 Um, so now, so this is how I can manage my symbols. I could also choose um, to, if I can, like before, just copy this data, so duplicate the data set, um, duplicate layer. So as an alternative to working with uh, my categorical symbology here, I can choose to work with a gradiated. So gradiated is something that goes from less to more. And we had the population size. So if I wanted to work with this, I would choose this population max. I can choose a color gradient. There's different gradients. We can edit them ourselves. So we could go from red to bluish. And again here, I have to press my classifier. And now go down to my, so this, my hair where it says how I want to classify it. And there are different approaches. And here you can see there's, they're scraping the surface, there's lots in the video about working uh, with this type of data. Yeah, look the links. So now I can press classify and it will classify them according to the size. So the population. So I have two different approaches here. I had the radiated color, which was the one I used for population. Let me see here. Or I have the categorical one where I distinguish between capitals and non-capitals. In both cases, I can go into the my legend here, part here, and then type in capital or the town. 
so I can have my symbols like this. It has all other values. If there was a value I didn't have included, it would go down as this, turn that off. So now I have my data set here. This is by And that's good. I don't know why then what that one's not displayed. Never mind. Um so now I have my different layers. I've talked about different types of styling. I've talked about saving my styling. Be aware that you can only save if you go into the properties and then choose your Symbology looks very much like the same. You know, here we have this style save. It looks like this one, which is my styler, which gives me this dialog box here. The only difference is that here I can't save. So that is a note, a little thing to get confused on that. Good. So I hope that is um, all we need to know about you know, basics of styling. There's one thing that is not so much to do with styling, but yet again, it's in the same area. That is labeling. So before we finish, you just put labels on our towns, giving the name of it. So again, here there is um, a different versions of it. I prefer to go right click properties. Labeling and um, here I can label a single label and choose my name and apply. So now we can see that all the towns are labeled with the name of the town. Um, it can be difficult to read on top of this layer, so you can add be careful with using this tool, it does look really easy, look very ugly. Let's give it a little buffer to make it clear. Um, but there's too many. I just I only want to label my capitals. If you want to do that, instead of choosing our single label, go and choose rule based label. Take our rule, double click it, and say just like the filter we used before. So in the second video about subsetting, we have a filtering tool. Not quite the same, but works more or less the same. The dialog box is a bit different. I have to go into this font called Fields and Values and say that my admin capital here has to be equal to remember that capitals had a value of one. So equal one. So now I have this rule here. If I apply. Oh, it wants to stop I press the apply button there. You can see that now only capitals have been labeled. So that was just a extra little thing about not really styling, but in that road, namely labeling. So hopefully I have covered different types of styling, single symbol, categorical gradient. I've talked about copying styles from one layer to another. And I've talked about labeling my style. In the next video, what I want to do is I want to do the final layout. There's however one little thing I should mention, and that means that by default at the moment, these are just values, numbers, and I want to replace them with a um, text saying what they are. So what I do is that I enter the styling tool here of that layer. And then I can go in 
and double click the value and type in what that is as a text. This is going to be really boring, so I'll just uh, do that while we change to the next video. So, see you in the next video. Bye.